Good afternoon, astronomy students. I wanted to go over today's lesson with you in person, but I'm not going to object with the snow day. I hope, as I mentioned to you in class, you have your priorities straight, and the first thing you did today was go out and enjoy a little bit of the snow. In this video, I want to review how we write significant digits in scientific notation. The first object is to figure out how many significant digits are in each of these numbers. In this first one, the 2, the 0, and the 7 are each significant, so we have three significant digits. In the fourth one, again, we, or in the second one, we have, again, three significant digits. However, this uh, 0 right here, since it is to the right of the decimal and to the right of the significant digits, that is also significant, indicating that there is extra precision. So in this case, we have four significant digits. Um, when we come down to the problem number three, we see that there are, once again, only three digits to the right of the decimal and to the right of the first non-zero digits. So in this case, we only have three again. The two zeros over on problem four that are to the right of the numbers and to the right of the decimal, which is over here, indicate that there is extra precision with this number. So in this case, we have five significant digits. And on question number five, we're back to three. Only the first three numbers are significant. Now, when we're writing scientific notation, we use all of the significant digits and then write the number times 10 to a power. So there's one digit followed by a decimal followed by a number to it, the 10 to a certain power. In this case we're going to have 2.07 times 10 to the fifth power. We're looking here that currently the decimal place would be right about here and we'd move one, two, three, four, five places to the left, giving us a five as our exponent. In question number two, we need to use all of our significant digits, so this will not save us. In fact, this will actually be an expanded form of writing the number. We're going to write 2.070 times 10 to the second power, because the decimal place would move two places to the left. Question number three. Again, it's going to start out with the same 2.07 times 10. In this case, the decimal place has to move to the right, and it moves one, two, three, four places. So that's times 10 to the negative fourth power. We can use scientific notation to write larger numbers and smaller numbers. In the case here, we have a pretty large number. In question number three, we have a small number. Now, one would think that uh, question three and four are very similar, which they are, but since these extra zeros indicate more precision, we're going to write this as 2.0700 times 10 to the negative fourth power. Finally, question number five, 2.07 times 10 to the third. Okay, with problems 6 and 7, I want to look a little bit deeper into significant digits and how we round numbers. Um, so I'm asking write pi to 6 significant digits. I'm going to bring the calculator on the screen and click on the pi button. And if I'm going to write pi to 6 significant digits, I have the 314159. 3.14159. Those are the first um, six digits of pi, so I want to write pi to six places. 
I'm going to go 3, 3.14159. Now, question number seven is a little more complex. I'm asking what is 1 divided by pi? So I'm going to bring the calculator back. Uh, it's clear 1 divided by pi. And again, I'm asking for this to six places. Now, at first, it might seem like um, I want to just take the first six significant digits, which would be the 0 0.318309. But anytime I ask you to round to a certain um, number of places, you always need to look at the next place over, which in this case is an 8. If I'm looking to the seventh place, I will see that 8 will end up rounding on top of the 9. However, when we round up on top of a 9, what we're really doing is turning that 9 into a 10. So this is going to be a little more complex. 3, 1, 8, 3, 1, 0. So again, that's going to be point three one eight three one zero. Because when we're rounding to 6 places, we need to look at the 7th. And if it's five or higher, it will round up. OK, on to question eight. In this case, I'm telling you how fast light travels, which is remarkably fast at uh, 3.00 times 10 to the 5 kilometers per second. That's 300,000 kilometers every second, or 186,000 miles every second. I want you to um, use three significant digits here. So um, in all of our calculations, we're just going to use three significant digits. And the first question is, how far does light travel in one hour? Well, if we know that um, light travels 300,000 kilometers per second, I need to figure out how fast it is going in one hour. So what is the kilometers per hour rather than kilometers per second? Now, I'm going to come over here to the calculator. And right away, I need to make sure that I'm using um, the scientific notation mode. Now in this on this calculator I have a certain set of numbers over here which are going to be the significant digits and then the E plus means times 10 to the power of whatever number is over here. So the E is representing exponents and this would be to the positive power. So if I'm going to write the speed of light that's going to be 3.00 000, and then I'm going to hit the EXP button to um, indicate that I want that to the fifth power. So this number here, 3.00 times 10 to the fifth, looks like this on the calculator, 3.00e to the positive 5. Or it can be written in an expanded form as 300,000. But what I need to do is figure out how many kilometers it's traveling in an hour. Well, I know there are 60 seconds in a minute, and 60... Um, now let me put that as seconds, and then 60 minutes in an hour. So what I need to do is I need to take this number times 60 times 60. So I find that um, the speed of light in terms of kilometers an hour is 1.08, I lost my calculator there, times 10 to the ninth power. So just um, let me move the worksheet over just a little bit more so I can get the calculator all the way on the screen. Next question is, how far does light travel in a day? Now I'm not going to bother clearing out the calculator because I already have this number in. If I know um, that light travels 1.08 times 10 to the 9 kilometers in an hour, to find that um, the day, that's just simply going to be times 24. So I'm going to multiply this number times 24, and I find out that light travels 2.59. Notice that since I'm only using three significant digits here and anywhere in these calculations, I'm just going to leave it at, at that times 10 to the 10th power. Finally, I want to um, know how far light travels in a year. So how far is a light year in terms of kilometers? I'm going to multiply this by 365.24. So I take the number that's already in the calculator, multiply it by 
365.24 and I find out that one light year is so if I multiply by 365.24 I know that one light year is 9.47 that's 9 9.47 times 10 to the 12th. And you can see right away this is much easier doing it in scientific notation because if we uh, put this number into expanded notation, you can see it's this gigantic enormous thing which would be, these are the hundreds, the thousands, the millions, billions. It's about nine and a half trillion kilometers or 9.47 times 10 to the 12 kilometers. Okay, question number nine really shows the power and demonstrates the power of scientific notation. This is really a rather ridiculous question. I'm asking you how many atoms there are in the sun. Well, we know atoms are extraordinarily small and the sun is just beyond description in how large it is. Um, but we happen to know the mass of the sun, and we also know the mass of a typical hydrogen atom. Since the sun is composed mostly of hydrogen atoms, we can say how many times will this go into this? This is a very simple division problem. We can simply set it up by writing 1.99 times 10 to the 30 divided by 1. 0.67 times 10 to the minus 27th. Now, again, this is a very large number, and with the negative exponent, we have a very, very small number, the mass of an atom, again, compared to the mass of the sun. Now, if you know how to multiply and, and divide with exponents, when you're multiplying, you can add exponents. When we're dividing, we subtract them. Keep in mind, we're subtracting a negative in this point. Or we can simply come over to the calculator very easily. And again, make sure we're activated in scientific notation. I'm going to put in 1.99 times 10 to the 30th power divided by 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th power and hit equals. I find out that I have 1.19, those are my three significant digits that I'm working with, times 10 to the 57th power. So I'm going to write that out 1, 1.19 times 10 to the 57th power. That's telling me there's 1.19 times 10 to the 57 atoms in the sun. Now, if I write this in expanded form, um, actually, in this case, this number is so enormously large, this calculator can't handle um, expanded form. But what this would look like would be a 1 followed by a 1, 9, followed by 55 zeros. So like I said, just an extraordinarily large number. But we do have an idea of how many atoms are in the sun. We, of course, could go on and calculate how many atoms are in the, in the galaxy and then maybe how many atoms there are in the entire known universe. At any rate, you can see that when not even a large calculator can handle a number like this, scientific notation, it's rather easy to express extremely large numbers.